And of course, our news cameras were there. Birmingham Wholesale Market was converted into a paddock for three and a half million pounds worth of gleaming racing machinery, a magnet for many of the world's leading motorsporting personalities. Sterling Moss, Sir Jack Brabham, Salvadori, Innis Ireland. James Hunt and John Watson were there too. And five times a world champion in the 50s, the great Fangio, racing on Birmingham streets one day. Why not, he says. There are so many other road races, why shouldn't we have one here? Kinney Gibson, the Olympic Games opening rocket man, started the day spectacular with an 18-second flight from PJ Evans to Bristol Street Motors, where he was greeted by Birmingham's deputy Lord Mayor. And then it happened all afternoon with the Red Baron, Baron Tulu de Graffenried, taking to the streets first in a priceless Alfa Romeo. The sight and sound of racing Bugattis in glorious sunshine thrilled a vast crowd, all for free. More modern racing saloons had their fling too. All part of an extraordinary hype to boost the bill application which the city solicitor is preparing for the council to approve before it's presented to Parliament next month. And every vantage point around the city was filled to capacity. 160 cars entertained in dummy grids and dummy races. Mind you, they weren't supposed to be racing for real as there were no proper crash barriers to protect the crowds on the pavements. They had to soft pedal it. Organiser Martin Hone did his best to contain enthusiastic right feet. But the police were obviously very nervous that something might go wrong. Fortunately for the future of getting motor racing for real on the streets of Birmingham, everything went off smoothly. And the great Fangio got behind the wheel of a classic Mercedes-Benz. Today's heroes were well represented, John Watson. John, they do this every two years, it seems, before the motor show. It's a great warm-up for the motor show, but will they ever have real motor racing here? Well, first of all, Richard, they have to get government approval, and that means uh, an act that enables you to close public roads to hold a motor race. And if that obstacle can be overcome, then really, there's no reason why you can't have motor racing in Birmingham, and I would imagine then ultimately a Grand Prix because other cities do this, certainly not in, not in England presently, but all around the world. Street races are becoming more popular. It's a little bit too slow for Grand Prix cars, isn't it? Well, I don't think so. I mean, you just look at Grand Prix racing and all the circuits they go to, they're never sort of going at very, very high speeds, and they seem to love going slower and slower and slower to make the cars safer so they don't have any bad accidents. <laughs> but having said that, um, they, they certainly do seem to favour, you know, city circuit race, street racing. And I would have thought this place was perfect for it. It would cost a lot of money, but when you look at the actual circuit itself, it doesn't need repaving. That's the great thing. A lot of these circuits, like Dallas, they had to actually build a circuit. They've had to build one at Las Vegas in the car park there. So I think you know, the cost would be high, but not relative to what other people have had to pay. And I think the, the prestige that it brings that city is quite outrageous. And, you know, I mean, the Americans are so Birmingham, you know, we thought that was the home of the, sort of the, the, the British manufacturing area of, of cars. Of course it is. But I mean, you know, let's just try and show the world that it's more than that, you know, that Birmingham has got more to offer. It certainly has. And just to remind you, the Motor Show opens to the public on Saturday.